Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be reviewing the Lupine SL Mono ST VZO by Kedlite. Lupine's SL Mono is the brand's first headlight with an integrated battery and STVZO approval. It gives you the best of both worlds. You get a crisp beam cutoff with a simple all-in-one design for quick installation and removal. Packaging-wise, you can see very simple. It's just a compact cardboard box with the black Lupine branding, some trademark information underneath, and that's about it. So go ahead and take this out of the box and go over the specs. Retail price on this is $250. It has 700 lumens of output that gives you up to 16 hours of runtime in the low output mode. You have the STVZO certified lens, so this gives you a crisp beam cutoff, and you can see a very cool projector lens design. It is an all aluminum construction, so highly durable. It achieves an IP68 certification, so pretty impressive, given the fact that you can actually take this apart and replace the battery. So Lupine offers tons of spare parts and replaceable batteries, which is really a rare feature as most lights are fully integrated and non, not designed to be serviceable. You have USB Type-C charging on here, as well as an ambient light sensor that can automatically switch between a low mode and a low beam mode, so you can conserve some battery. In terms of what comes with this, obviously you have the headlight with the battery integrated. It's 3,300 milliamps in the bottom, and again, replaceable. You can actually see the ambient light sensor right here. You get a handlebar mount, so this is pretty cool. It's in all aluminum construction again, no plastics here. It has a simple cam style design that you put around your handlebar, and then using the provided bolt, this will actually attach on the side and give you angle adjustment. You get the tool for that bolt, as well as a spare washer, which is a really nice feature the USB Type-C charging cable for recharging the light, as well as the instruction manual on the bottom, and some stickers for Lupine. Now let's take a look at the weight of the SL Mono. The headlamp by itself, that comes in at 150 grams, which is not bad, given the fact that it is an all aluminum construction. And then the handlebar mount with the bolt, that comes in at 19 grams. Lupine's SL Mono takes Lupine's popular SL series of lights and adds an integrated battery for a more compact form factor, which means you don't have to have a wired battery pack or route any cables on your bike. The SL Mono has the SL Nano's lens, so you can see very compact lens, and they've simply extended the housing downward to accommodate a 3300 milliamp battery underneath it. You can see all aluminum housing with a matte black finish you have little cutouts on the side for heat dissipation. The power button on top with the Lupine logo and backlighting. You have the side mount here, so the bolt that attaches to the mount or the accessories. And then you have a USB Type-C charging port on the side. So really easy to access. And then you have the basic branding on the back as well. So very compact and you'll notice there's actually exposed screws here. So that means you can actually take this light apart and replace the battery. Lupine offers fully serviceable design with a bunch of replacement parts. So you can replace the battery, the lens, and even the small bits like the bolt. So they actually stand behind their products and that's one reason why these are so expensive. They're not designed just to be thrown away. They're designed to be kept and be your only light for years to come. So really cool to see and it's great to have something that's more future proof. The lens is probably the coolest part about the light. So you can actually see it's a projector lens you can almost make out the yellow of the LED in the center, and then you have this circular lens that really focuses it. You also have these horizontal deflectors around the edge. And what this does, it generates a very nice beam. So you have no real artifacts and very sharp beam cutoff. So you can see when you're on the road, you have this nice trapezoidal shape that generates light right in front of the light as well. It's not offset, so you're illuminated directly from your front wheel forward. So really slick and obviously non-glare design, so as long as you're underneath the headlight, you can see no glare. And you have these really nice features here, so one of the best features about these lights is really the lens design. And something you don't see with the sub $100 bike lights. Mounting on this is also really cool. So it is a side screw design. You have the handlebar mount, which takes a little bolt, attaches here, 
And then you can see you have angle adjustment with the simple cam style. So you can easily install this on a commuter bike and then pop it off as it's tool free. And because there's no cables here, you can just pop off the whole thing and not worry about it. So pretty slick. The user interface has a lot of Lupine products, a little bit more complicated. You have a simple double click to turn on. And with the headlight, it's simply three modes. So you do a single press to cycle between a daylight mode, then a brighter high beam mode. So the low setting have, gives you the highest runtime of 16 hours, and then the high beam is obviously better for shorter use, but still gives you good runtime even though you have a small size. You can also do additional features like disabling that ambient light sensor. So there's a little light sensor in here that'll automatically switch between the low beam and then the eco mode. So it's kind of a cool feature, and that ensures you can actually get the most runtime out of the light as they'll automatically switch between them. There is no wireless remote with this. It's just the simple top button, unlike the SLAF we previously reviewed. You can also mount this using some adapter. So you can see here they have a GoPro adapter. Use that same bolt design. So this will attach to the side of the light. And then you can attach this to underneath your out front mount. And because you have the angle adjustment, you can position it perfectly. It's a really cool setup and definitely a premium light that can last quite a long time. Here you can see the SL Mono set up on a Priority Ace of Spades. Beautiful light with the matte finish and aluminum construction. The included handlebar mount really works well. So you have angle adjustment as long as you don't over tighten the side bolt. And it really blends in with the bike. So you have the nice round lens and the battery underneath, no cables or anything else to worry about. It's nice all-in-one construction. You can easily just pop it off your bike. There's only three modes here. This daytime, which is only 150 lumen, low, which is 350, and then the high mode, which is 700. If you leave the light sensor on, you'll automatically switch it between the daytime mode and the low mode. Here you can see the low mode. It's more than bright enough for riding with. Even though it's only 350 lumens, it feels much brighter because all 350 lumens are on the ground rather than a traditional light, which would have half of that in the sky. You can see the beam shape is also really nice. You have sharp beam cutoff, and it's illuminated all the way from your front wheel forward, so you don't have a big dark patch in front of you. The beam width is about two lanes at the end, and even in front of your bike, it's about a lane width, so more than wide enough. The camera here exaggerates it. You can kind of see the sides, but it's very well-defined beam. It has a lot of beam cutoff lights, the big problem here is if you're doing fast sweeping corners, there is no auto leveling here like you'd have in a car. So if you really angle your bike, that angle means you might be turning into a darker patch. The one downside of general beam cutoffs, it'd be great to see an auto leveling feature like a gyroscope built into the mount. Otherwise the light works well and you can see the illuminated button it makes it really easy to see which mode you're in. This is the high mode more than bright enough for really dark sections. And you really can get away with just medium mode which gives you more than enough runtime. We didn't really care for the daytime sensor mode as the daytime mode isn't really that bright and you don't have any flashing or anything to keep you visible. It would have been nice to have a separate DRL built in like a ring around the lens like you see with the SLAF. But otherwise, really nice light, very simple. You just switch between your two modes and that's all you really need. When it comes to bike light, you basically have three lens designs. You have the more premium projector lens here that we have with the Lupine SL. That generates really crisp beam cutoff. Then you have a reflector style. So you can see you have top mounted LEDs with the reflectors on the bottom. So this refractor style gives you that beam cutoff, which prevents glare from other oncoming traffic, but you can see less crisp as you have more artifacts. This is more affordable design and takes up less space than the projector lens. And then you have standard lens which has a simple cone beam. So this just generates a cone of light. And even with these little deflectors, like this Magic Shine has, which helps distribute some of the light downward. So you can see there's a little bit more light here than the top. It's still quite blinding. So generates quite a bit of glare, but obviously quite a bit more compact and more affordable. So in terms of the projector lenses, we have the Light Skin NACA Road here. So you can see also STVZO certified. And very cool design. You can actually see the curvature of the lens on the inside. Designed to be mounted from the top, which is really cool. 
So, you, and it's more compact than the Lupine. Not nearly as bright, but you can see again, it's a nice crisp beam cutoff and a nice sharp cutoff that prevents any glare. It's also supposedly more aerodynamic with little side cutouts that help you be seen from different angles. That's a feature of the Lupine actually lacks. It's hard to see this light from a side angle. Magishine also released their ZX Pro. This actually also has a projector lens so you can see on the inside and it's what makes this light so much bigger. This is only 350 lumens with the ZX Pro, but you can see really nice sharp beam cutoff. So it generates a beautiful beam, but a lot smaller and more narrow than the Lupine. And obviously a lot more affordable, quarter of the price, but not nearly as bright. You can see the mounting on this uses a Garmin mount on the bottom, which is nice, but makes it harder to mount underneath items as you can't really flip it. You'd have to get a mount that's lower, that has like a lower carrier, which is a lot harder to find versus the side mount or the top mount you see with the NACA Road. In terms of the refract refractor style lenses, you can see the outbound lighting detour. It's a pretty cool light, so very wide. You have the side indicators, USB type C, and even though the lens does have some artifacts, it generates a nice beam cutoff. And you can see nice sharp and very wide compact form factor with this tripod style connector and simple user interface with multiple light options as well as flash options that you don't get with SDVZO, which doesn't allow it. Topeak also has their white light 800BT. This is actually a connected design so you can connect the tail light and the headlight. It has a cool dual design so you can actually mount this from the top or the bottom using this tap style just by removing this rubber. It has a more affordable price point, but you can see more artifacts in here. It has flash modes as it's not STVZO certified. And otherwise pretty cool light as you can actually connect your tail light. Trek has a also connected design. This is their Commuter Pro RT. Similar refractor, refractor style, so you can see top mounted LED. This has an even better connectivity feature, so you can actually connect a tail light and then turn them on and off with the single button versus the two buttons. Really nice battery display. This is quite expensive, up to $200 with the tail light, uh, but still more affordable than Lupine. Metal construction, but not quite as crisp as the Lupine's beam, obviously. And then the Magishine RN 1500, a lot more affordable, gives you a lot of output, USB type C, multi battery status levels here. So a good light, but obviously if you're on trails or you're in a country that requires STVZO, this is not a great light as it's quite blinding. Now let's go over the pros and cons for the Lupine SL Mono. What we like about it is you have a sharp beam cutoff. It's really a beautiful beam thanks to our projector lens. It's also fully serviceable aluminum construction, and you can even replace a battery with the replacement part through Lupine, which is really rare to see. You have a clever side mount as well, so you can easily set this up on your bike or purchase an optional GoPro adapter to install this on a lot of third-party accessories. The main cons for the light is that it is expensive. At $250, it's a lot to spend for just 700 lumens. And it also lacks a separate DRL for daytime mode. Instead, it just runs it at a lower output. Would have liked to see the ring DRL that the other SLs have, like the SLAF that we previously reviewed. Taking everything into account, we give the light a 9.2 out of 10. So it has a beautiful beam and build quality to match. Thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can see more content from us on our website at thesweetcyclist.com, as well as follow us on Instagram at thesweetcyclists. This is The Sweet Cyclist reminding you to enjoy the ride.